Howdy y'all, I'm Anna with Always Right, and in today's author tube video, I'm gonna be going over Elmore Leonard's 10 tips to writing. I'm gonna try to justify them, try to explain them, and try to tell you like what part of your writing process you should consider these tips. Before we get into these tips, let's talk briefly about Elmore Leonard because I no idea who he was. He is an author that started publishing books in the 1950s. He started out with some westerns and then he came to specialize in crime fiction and suspense thrillers. You may know some of his works as Get Shorty, Out of Sight, Swag, Hombre, Mr. Majestic, and Rum Punch. Rum Punch was adapted into the film Jackie Brown. His work also spawned the FX series Justified. I personally have never read any of his books and I don't really think I will. They're not really my cup of tea. But he was a best-selling author, he was a long-lived author, and uh, quite a few of his books were later turned into movies. But we're here to talk about his 10 tips for writing. So let's get into it. The first tip is never open your book with weather. Now this is not talking about if you have magical abilities and you can be like, wind power, open the book. That's not what he's talking about. Opening your book with weather is talking about you starting out your book, your very first sentence, your very first line of your book, being about the weather, aka it was a dark and dreary night, or the wind was clattering against the rooftop, or the sun was out so my tits were out. No, well maybe the last one. I would, I would be intrigued by the last one. <laughs> Just don't do it. It's very juvenile. It's very mundane. It's not gonna have your book standing out. Think about it. Weather conversations, that's like something we do with people that we don't know and we're not like super comfortable with them. Weather conversations is very impersonal and it's very kind of like arm's length conversation style. Now if you've already written your first draft and you hear this tip and you go, Oh my God, I'm an idiot. I have to throw the whole book away. It's fine. It's fine to have like a weather scene be in your opening scene for the first draft or two. But after that, you need to like take it out, get it out of here, put in an actual banger. The second tip is to avoid prologues. People just don't read prologues. And if you're in the process of like querying and you have a prologue, maybe don't have a prologue. I'm not exaggerating when I say 50% of the people that read books don't read the prologues. They just assume, eh, it's got spoilers in it. I don't wanna ruin it for myself. So they like push it away. They go, bye prologue, skip four pages I don't have to read, skip. So just don't waste your time, don't waste your brain power, don't waste your creativity on trying to think of a prologue. Tip number three, never use a verb other than said to carry dialogue. Uh, this is a tip that you will hear very often on author tube. Said is not dead. You said, just you said, don't use yell. You said, already said it. <laughs> you said. Oh, uh, said is just such a strong verb and like us readers, we just kind of skim over it. We go, oh, that's nice. I know that word. I like that word. And we're like not pulled out of the conversation that's going on between your characters. This tip is great for any phase. Just take that stress off yourself and just use said, just do it. The next tip is never use an adverb to modify the verb said. So I don't entirely agree with this. There may be some situations where it is necessary or it's like helpful, aka he said slowly. Most of the other cases, it's not really necessary. And I agree with that. This is another tip you should take to heart and like apply to all of your drafts, all of your manuscripts. Adverbs for said really kind of slow down the pacing. They really draw the reader out of the conversation. Well, really any word outside of the conversation that's going on between characters is like slowing down the conversation with the characters in the reader's mind. So minimize your adverbs at least. I'm not gonna say never. Tip number five, keep your exclamation points under control. You are allowed no more than two or three per 100,000 words of prose. I really, really like this one because I was thinking back to the books that I've read recently and I genuinely can't remember a single time where I saw an exclamation point except for like 
Sarah J Mass up there. I think she's one of the few that uses exclamation points. A lot of the other fiction that I've read does not use exclamation points. I don't know if it's like an editor thing. I don't know. When I first read this tip, I was like, oh, it's aimed at like Wattpad people. And then I'm like, wait, this guy died in 2013. Probably not aimed at Wattpad people exclusively. Try to avoid exclamation points. It kind of makes you look like a newer author because that excitement that is portrayed with that exclamation point can be portrayed with like context, with dialogue, with like action. You don't have to use an exclamation point. And yes, it does make your book look not that great to have a lot of exclamation points. Like I said, one of the first things that came to mind for me when I saw this was a oh, Wattpad. Cause that's what I would see on Wattpad is excessive exclamation points. And yeah, just another tip to keep in mind, just always, especially when you're editing. <laughs> the next tip is never use the words suddenly or all hell broke loose. Don't do it, especially together. Don't you dare put suddenly all hell broke loose in your book. It's cheap, it's lazy, and like it's not helping the reader at all. It's great to exaggerate in a general conversation with someone. An example, the dog had a poo poo in front of the Roomba and all hell broke loose and the Roomba spread it everywhere. Yes, that's great for a conversation, but it's not great when you're writing a novel because the point is, is to show your readers, not tell your readers that, oh, all hell broke loose, whoops, end of the chapter. No, have like a crack appear, a major crack. Have a demon reach its arm through that little crack. That's when we will know all hell is broken loose. And that was a metaphor, by the way. You don't have to have like in the middle of your like Amish romance book, like <laughs> demon hand cracking through. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> For tip number six, this is more like an editing thing. If you're doing a zero draft or a first draft, it's fine to have suddenly or all hell broke loose, but make sure that when you're editing in the future, you edit that garbage out. You get it out of here right now. The seventh tip that Elmore shared with us is use regional dialect or patois sparingly, AKA don't pull your readers out of your book by using like specific language that would ruin it for the reader. Some things that come to mind include Creole and pigeon. Don't you freaking do it. Don't you do it, buddy. Don't you include pigeon or Creole in your book, even if they speak Creole or speak pigeon. Because if your reader has to mentally pull themselves out of that book and read like your dialogue out loud to themselves to understand it, how quickly do you think the reader's gonna put it down because they're tired of it? Very good answer. <laughs> when you're first drafting your book, don't make it difficult on yourself. Don't like butcher the English language. Don't butcher the language you're writing to make the dialect like pop on your page because your reader's not gonna like it. Those are actually like some of my least favorite books to read. And of course there were books I had to read during college and they were mostly like stream of consciousness. And I don't think that's what y'all are doing with your book. So just don't. <laughs> Tip number eight, avoid detailed descriptions of characters. Don't you dare have them look at the mirror and start describing themselves to me. I don't want that garbage. No one wants to read that, believe it or not. So just, so just don't. This is like a drafting editing tip. Just don't do it. Just get that out of here. It's okay to like remark on a characteristic of a character. Like that's fine. That's great if that's like all you give the reader because guess what the brain's gonna do? It's gonna like fill in the rest and you're gonna have a really cool character in their mind. Tip number nine is very similar to what we just talked about and that is don't go into great detail describing places or things. You're not Tolkien. Your readers are not willing to put up with your bullshit of <laughs> reading. Like just paragraphs of description. I'm sorry. It's great to like introduce the setting like probably the orange tree does here, but like 
We don't want pages of description. We don't want to know every minute detail of like a rock or like a sword. Maybe you like reveal something about the sword, get it wet with blood, and then you notice something different about the sword. Like you can add on to the descriptions as you go. It's the opposite of white room. It's literally like a Walmart where the aisles are too narrow and you can't get two baskets by each other. That's what you're doing if you're just doing too much description. Yeah, this tip is true for like every phase, but especially for like your editing phases. I understand like in your first draft or two, it may be difficult to cut down on your words, maybe difficult to cut down on the description, maybe difficult to figure out what needs to stay, what doesn't. And that's okay. I mean, editing's difficult. That's why you have to do multiple uh, readings and edits of your book. It's because it's difficult. Tip number 10. This is definitely an editing tip. Try to leave out the part that readers tend to skip. So this is definitely like an editing tip. It's not so much a first draft tip. Go ahead, put all the scenes in there that you want for your first draft. That's fine. As long as you finish the draft and start editing it, because that's where like the real magic happens is in the editing. That's when your book goes from like this manuscript, this brainchild, to a book, a novel. For learning what parts people don't like, this is gonna take you to <gasps> read. I know, terrifying news. Sorry, the condition is you have to read. <laughs> read a lot of books, read a lot of different books, but you have to read so that you know what readers like to skip over because then when you're editing your book, you'll realize, oh, I usually skip over this. I don't really like this. I'm kind of getting tired, getting like distracted easily while trying to read this one chapter. Cut the chapter. This is like a key editing note. This is like the best editing advice, basically, is if you're kind of bored with the scene and you're reading it, rework it or cut it because your readers are gonna be bored of the scene too. Thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments which one of these tips is your favorite or if any of them were new. The suddenly and all hell broke loose tip was new to me. Most of the others are pretty kind of generic. Um, I really like the one about the weather because I've read so many Wattpad stories, so many like old short stories, which they could do it back then. That's the thing. Like you look at books that were published even just in the 2000s or early teens, even the teens. And you're like, well, they wrote like this. Why can't I write like this? And it's like, baby, they already did it. You gotta do something different. It's, it's a whole mess. Uh, if I could give any advice to you, get your first draft done and keep on. Like I said earlier, the editing is where the magic comes out of your book. Uh, the editing is where you get a novel out of a draft, so. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. It means so much to me. And as always, let's get writing.